The WLC 5000 provides a long-term solution for precise water level control in any environment. This installation guide will demonstrate how it could permanently replace a faulty float assembly or any other electronic level control. This typical water system should look similar to what exists in your application. Your water line controls kit includes the panel with two mounting wings, the sensor with 50-foot multi-conductor wire, a 3-inch mounting chamber, U-bolts, mounting bracket, and hardware kit. The sensor wire can be ordered in longer lengths as needed. A valve and a Y strainer are needed for installation and can be purchased from Waterline Controls. We recommend placing the control panel as close to the cooling tower as possible, keeping it above the water basin but out of line of sight of any VFD. The panel can be mounted on the tower using proper mounting devices for anti-vibration. When running metal conduit, Keep note of the high voltage and low voltage compartments in the waterline panel. It's important to not cross high voltage conduit with low voltage conduit in order to avoid inductive electrical interference. High voltage connections, such as the one for power in or the valve operation, should have conduits running into the high voltage area, and the ones for the sensor wire and the BMS should run into the low voltage compartment. If that is not possible, Make sure the cross is perpendicular. If you want to run a high voltage circuit for the alarms, additional conduit connections from the high voltage compartment are needed. Find a convenient location to mount the sensor on an interior wall so no holes are in the exterior basin. Place the bracket assembly such that adjustment of the sensor chamber assembly will ensure the rods align with your desired operating range of water levels. An alternative solution for the sensor mount would be to install an external static pipe if limited interior space calls for an exterior mount. This waterline control system is color coded so the colored rods match the colored wire on each relay to identify which switch activates with its respective sensor rod. The circuit board inside the low voltage compartment has the bottom terminal block for the sensor connections and the top terminal block for building management connections. The low voltage sensor is a jacketed and shielded bundle of seven wires. A bare wire, black, blue, brown, white, red, and green. The sensor rods are colored respectively. The blue rod is not present, so the blue wire does not need to be connected. From the longest rod to the shortest, the black is the software start switch and needs to be as long or longer than the brown rod. The brown rod is the low alarm. The white turns the valve on, the red turns the valve off, and the green is the high alarm. The bare wire cable shield connects in with the black sensor wire. The power LED on the panel will flash red and green and not allow the controls to function if the wires are not connected properly. The connections for the building management systems use normally open relays that close when the switch is activated. These connections come into the low voltage area and connect to the top terminal block with two positions in the lower terminal. These will indicate the state of the water level control switch points, including a power loss instance. In this case, there are four BMS indications that can be used, high and low alarm points, fill on and off, and fault conditions. When running the conduit for the valve connection, locate the placement of both the valve and the Y strainer. Run your valve connections through the conduit into the high voltage area. They are represented here with orange wires. In the high voltage area, there are three power wires for the power in connections, black, white, and green. There are also three relays for low alarm, high alarm, and fill, each with colored wire for its respective sensor rod. The red and white rod are switched with the relay with red wire. Make the power connections. The green wire is ground, the white wire is neutral, and the black wire is the hot wire leg. A jumper runs from the hot leg into the common of the fill relay. The valve has two wires. One goes with the neutral bundle of white wires, and the other gets a spade to plug into the normally open aspect of the relay. It's ready for use. To test your waterline control system, press the Press to Test push button using the tip of a pencil or pen. 
The yellow testing LED turns on and remains on during the test. Each switch will turn on the LED, the BMS connection, and the high voltage respective relay. Once testing is completed, the power alarm LED will flash five times, turn green, and the yellow test light turns off. Operationally, the valve opens when the water drops below the white rod, and the LED for fill turns on along with the respective relay and dry contact. The valve closes when the water reaches the red sensor rod. If the water drops below the brown rod, the low alarm LED turns on with the fill LED. If the water rises too high and touches the green rod, the high alarm activates. Your building management system should reflect the status at the waterline panel. Don't forget to register your waterline control system. The serial number can be located on the outside of the panel. Enjoy the WLC 5000 and its dependable use for many years. If you have any questions, feel free to contact our team at Waterline Controls. Thanks for watching.